I am super excited for this video. This is the LaserBear GameCube Blue Retro Controller PCB. It has a bunch of awesome features, but the biggest feature is to give your GameCube Blue Retro connectivity internally, so you don't need to use adapters and you can connect Bluetooth controllers directly to it. I'll go over more of the features later, but for now, let's get this installed into this GameCube. So let's take the GameCube apart first. All right, so we're going to focus on this controller PCB thing in the front. So let's disconnect the controller faceplate and then disconnect this ribbon cable. And we could put the rest of the GameCube aside for a second. Now we can unscrew these two screws in the controller PCB here. And we can wiggle out the old controller PCB put this aside. Actually, before we do that, an interesting thing is this replacement PCB has a socketable coin cell battery holder. So this old one was just a solder only one. So this is a bit of an upgrade to the coin cell battery. We need to install the antenna in this faceplate here. So go ahead and take the sticky backing off of the antenna. And with the memory card slots on the top side here, we're going to stick this antenna right in the middle of the plastic. Now we can install the new PCB where the old one was. Now we can attach the antenna connector to the ESP32 here. All we have to do is push this into place, but it might take a little bit of lining up and then make sure it's sort of where it's supposed to go. All we need to do is really push down doesn't take that much pressure. I mean, it takes a little bit of pressure, but it's more important for it to be lined up correctly than for you to kind of force it in there. And then we can reinstall those screws. Okay, now we need our GameCube again. We need to unplug the fan and the power cord from this board in the back. Okay, so the installation instructions are a little bit confusing. So what we want to do after we've unplugged both the fan and this power wire is leave the power and the fan wires here for a second and get our faceplate back. Now we need to find the wire that has this connector here. It has what looks like a female connection on both sides. It doesn't matter which end of this connector that you use, but you are gonna plug it into this connector here on the laser bear board. Just like that. Now we need to take the other wire that has a male and female end. We're going to plug the female end into this larger connector in the bottom right of the laser bear board. Now we can bring our GameCube back over and we're gonna take the fan connector that we disconnected earlier. And that is going to go into the smaller port above the one we disconnected. Like that. Very carefully, we're going to connect this flex cable back into the connector where the original cable was. And just make sure that the sets of red and black wires are kind of going up the left through this gap here. And we can put the front panel back on. Mine unfortunately only has one clip, but yours should have two. All right, let's spin this around again. Okay, the power cable that we disconnected is going to go into the male end of that cable that we left earlier. It's not the same connector type, but it should still fit in there and be kind of okay and secured. And we're gonna tuck that into here, sort of. Now we're gonna take the other cable and plug that into where the power board originally connected in the front right here. All right, that's pretty much it for the cable install. You'll notice that there is nothing plugged into where this fan used to be. I think that's because the fan is now controlled by the laser bear board. All right, now we can start putting things back together. I'm going to tuck the antenna here. I just kind of tucked it down inside here out of the way. I wanna make sure that I'm not catching on any of the wires here or down here when I put the shell back on. I should be able to put the shell back on with nothing interfering. Just kind of checking the buttons, make sure nothing's stuck. Then we can flip it over and screw everything back together. One thing that I saw when I first tried to start my console is when I hit the power button, 
you'll see that there's a blue LED that blinks twice and then nothing happens and there's no image on my screen here. While the power is still on, I'm gonna hold down the reset button until this light turns to red. Okay, so like that. And now you can see the console has started. So that will probably trip you up if you're getting that blue light, you'll need to hold the reset button down until the light turns red. Before we start using the blue retro adapter, let's first update the firmware. So you're only gonna need two things. You're gonna need to use a computer that has Google Chrome and a Bluetooth adapter. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a Bluetooth 5.0 adapter from TP-Link. In Chrome, we're gonna to go to blueretro.io. Then we're gonna click on over the air firmware update. Now there's gonna be a frustrating button here that says connect Blue Retro. When you click on this button, you're gonna see a list of Bluetooth devices for you to pair with. At this point, your GameCube should be powered on, but you shouldn't really be doing anything with it. The Blue Retro adapter should appear on the list of devices. Click on the device in the list and click pair. Now what I found is the first time you try to connect to a Blue Retro adapter, this is going to fail. But you could just try the connection again and hopefully it succeeds. That's what I had to do. If everything goes correctly, we should be able to see the current firmware on the Blue Retro adapter. And it will also show you if there is a more recent version of the firmware. So let's click this link to download the newest firmware. At the time this video was made, 1.8.1 was the most recent firmware. And according to the Blue Retro.io page, this is hardware two. So that is the version that I chose on the firmware page. Once we download and unzip the firmware file, we should be able to choose the firmware file from that zip folder for the GameCube firmware. It's gonna take a while for the firmware to update, but it should succeed. After you update the GameCube firmware, I found that the controller mappings have been reset to defaults. So we're gonna to have to go to the presets config menu. From the mapping config, we are going to find the GameCube merge analog and digital trigger selection and click save. Now that the Blue Retro firmware has been updated and the GameCube controller profile has been selected, let's go over some of the features of the LaserBear GameCube Blue Retro adapter. I'm gonna start from the beginning, so let's power on the console. I don't have any controllers paired with this yet. As you can see, when you power on the console, the LED is flashing between purple and red. That means that the console is in pairing mode. I'm going to pair this Switch Pro controller. I think all we have to do is turn it on. We may have to hit the sync button. Nope, all I did was power on the controller, and now you can see there is a blue LED in the first controller slot, and the Switch controller has the first player LED lit. That's pretty much the process for most Bluetooth controllers. You could use something like the DualShock or the PlayStation 4 controller. So let's go into a game. This really isn't a lag test or anything, but I've used other Blue Retro adapters before, and there really isn't that much latency that I can tell. I mean, I'm sure that there's some latency there because it's Bluetooth and it's not wired, but this is fine enough for playing most of the games that I would play. Now you might wanna connect another controller to the GameCube after that pairing mode is kind of over. To get back into pairing mode, we're gonna hold down the reset button until the LEDs start flashing a little bit faster. So we don't wanna let go when it starts blinking the first time, we wanna wait till it speeds up a little bit. Now we have our purple and red LEDs back. For my second controller, I'm gonna use this 8-Bit Bros adapter in X input mode with a wired GameCube controller. So I'm just gonna hit the red start button. And there we go, it's synced. I have noticed that the profile out of the box with the G-Bros adapter is a little bit off. I think the B and X buttons are swapped and for some reason the L and R buttons don't work. I don't know, I've had a little bit of issues with this G-Bros adapter so I'm just gonna leave it as is. But with the G-Bros adapter, you're supposed to be able to use the analog triggers of the wired GameCube controller in games. So this is an interesting option but there's some problems with the button profile. The reset button has some other functionality too. So let's say you wanted to un pair all of the controllers that are connected, that is what the first set of blinking lights is for. So if you hold down the reset button until the first pair of blinking lights happens, that is going to unpair everything. And as you can see now, there's no LEDs. Well, the first one here is blinking, but there's no controllers paired. There's also wired controller detection. So for example, if we have a Bluetooth controller already connected, you could see there's an LED in the first slot here. If I plug this wired controller into the first slot, then the Bluetooth controller automatically moves to the second slot, and now the wired controller is the first controller. There are a bunch of different button combinations that do different things with the LaserBear Blue Retro adapter, but I'm gonna show you one of the most interesting things. So if we hold left trigger, right trigger, start, and down 
on the face here. You'll notice that the GameCube is shut off, but the power button is still pushed in. The face buttons, by the way, are these buttons over here. So I pressed B, which is down on the face of the Switch Pro controller. Basically, the GameCube is in this low power state, and all you have to do to turn it back on again is just wake it up by turning on the controller. So the Switch Pro controller was bound through Bluetooth. I just pressed start on the, or plus on the controller, and it both paired the Switch Pro controller and woke the GameCube back up. This is a semi-hidden feature that I don't think a lot of people are talking about, but this is awesome if you wanna leave your GameCube on the other side of your living room or something, and you just wanna use wireless Switch controllers or something, you can leave your GameCube in that low power state and turn it on by turning on the controller. I'll leave a link in the description to the manual so you can see what other button combinations there are and what they do. If this video helps you figure out your Laser Bear Game Cube Blue Retro Adapter, give this video a like, and get subscribed so you don't miss more of my retro console modding tutorials. Check out this video if you want to learn more about Blue Retro and take a look at my Super Nintendo DIY Blue Retro Adapter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.